Hello and welcome to Basilicas, produced by the Basilica of St. Mary in Minneapolis. Our guest today is David Levkovich, who is the Artistic Director of Out of the Box Theatre. As you may know by now, the Basilica is collaborating with Out of the Box Theatre on an opera by Puccini entitled Suor Angelica. Welcome, David. Thanks so much for having me. So, David, tell us, how does this come about? Well, it's been certainly a uh, two years of the making. Um, I think when we first met, I was so impressed with the Basilica. It's an incredible space. It has years of history. And I find that uh, in Minneapolis, many people know the space, but they haven't necessarily been inside. And so when we first discussed it, was we decided, you know, like what opera might be presented here? And immediately I thought, Soir Angelica. It's such a beautiful opera. And the backdrop of the basilica underneath the incredible music of Puccini, it just seemed like the perfect fusion. So you say Suor Angelita came to mind immediately. What is so special about this opera? For me, you know, on the surface, it appears one way, like it almost seems like a piece about religion. But when you look deeper, that's actually not quite what it's about. I think religion is the framing device for the piece, but really it's a piece about love and loss. Mm -hmm and it's very relatable to the audience. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love a piece like that that sort of fools the audience, because at first you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna go see this piece, it's set in a church or a convent, and you have an expectation. Mm -hmm. But then when you experience the piece, it goes much, much deeper. Would you say the opera is about the human condition, you know, with our ups and downs, the struggles in life? Absolutely. I think Puccini is one of those amazing composers that is able to write about real life and real emotions. Um, but many of his operas end with our heroine perish, perishing, and that's sort of our last moment. But what I love about this opera is that, of course, like any great Puccini opera, we do have tragic elements, but ultimately the piece is about redemption. And that's why I just love it, and it's such a unique piece comparatively to some of his other works, and why I think it's such a special piece to be presenting here at the Basilica. Mm -hmm. Now, when I think of opera, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've loved opera. Well, my mother forced me to love opera, I think. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember you know, dressing up as a little boy and putting on my tie, and uh, my mom would take my brother and myself to the opera. It didn't work with my brother very well in the end. <laughs> But, um, and it's sort of a stuffy affair. Mm -hmm. um, Very formal. Formal, formal. Mm -hmm. Out of the box has a bit of a different philosophy about this, right? Absolutely. Well, I love formal opera. I mm -hmm. make a living from it. But we also believe that if it's too formal, sometimes that creates a barrier between the audience and the experience that they're having. So we like to instead of being in a theater or in an opera house, we like to find interesting spaces where people want to be. And those spaces aren't always formal spaces where you wear a tuxedo or a mm -hmm. full suit. Um, and so what I think is very exciting is that this is a beautiful space, and of course we want people to dress appropriately for the mm -hmm. basilica, but that you can also come as you are and just be yourself when you come to this space. Uh, when you're in a theater, there's certain expectations. You know, the lights are gonna go down, um, the curtain will go up, and you'll be able to sort of see the piece in front of you. But in the Basilica, we don't have some of those curtains and <laughs> lights and things like that, so we have to reframe and reset the expectations in a different way. Um, but by doing so, all of a sudden we get rid of some of the barriers that were once between the opera and the audience, and instead the audience gets to experience this firsthand, up close and personal. They even get to interact with the opera mm -hmm. to a certain extent. And that is truly unique, not something you would get in an opera house. Mm. So is that what you mean by it being an immersive experience? Exactly. The music will literally surround you. Um, one of the things that I love about opera is that when I sit there, the music with the orchestra and the chorus, it's like a wave coming over you, washing over mm. you. And I love being swept away by that musical wave. Um, and so in this sort of space, instead of having an orchestra pit between the audience and the stage, the orchestra is actually behind the performers for most of the show. Mm -hmm. And that allows the audience to be as close as possible to the action. The singers will be right next to you sometimes. Um, in our second space, the chapel, where we have the showdown between the Principessa and Suar Angelica, 
the audience could literally touch the performers. That's how close they are. Mm. And it makes for riveting drama to be so close to the action. You actually feel what they're going through. You can empathize what those performers are going through instead of just sympathize. Mm. And I think that's a much more relatable and exciting evening. Mm -hmm. And I understand that there are, so there are three scenes to the opera, right? And mm -hmm. you set them in three different spaces of the Basilica. So we start on the lowest level in the Teresa of Calcutta, and that's where we meet our convent, our, our nuns. Mm -hmm. We see sort of the day in the life of the nuns there. And then the audience will work their way from that space up one level to the chapel space. And this space is very different. It's very long. There are chairs on either side. Um, and the audience gets to sort of see this showdown between these two epic figures. And then from there, we work our way into the nave. And the nave, for me, it's so beautiful. It's, uh, it's a dramatic space. It feels like an operatic space. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect setting for Soir's beautiful aria, Senza Mama, which, of course, is when she's realized that her son has died, she sings this beautiful aria and the space really is the perfect setting for them mm -hmm. um, and then of course with the scene of redemption I think it's the most logical and perfect spot for redemption right there in the nave <laughs> and you invited the cathedral choir to participate oh my gosh and that has been so exciting you know we have our sturdy group of nuns who mm -hmm. are fabulous with the out-of-the-box group and then we combine them with the basilica choir and the power of these two organizations together created something that was even better, even bigger, even more exciting mm -hmm. than I had ever anticipated. Mm -hmm. The music calls for a large group, and when you have these wonderful singers all singing together, it lifts everybody into almost an ecstatic moment. How was it to work with the reverberation in the Basilica? Incredibly difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, the space is very live, and, and so you, there's almost an echo when you hear that sound. So we had to adapt. We had to, um, the space is really large, and our conductor is all the way at one end, and, and the choir is spread out around the audience. But once we figured it out, and mm. it was great having the Basilica Choir there to show us mm. how to sing in that space, and once we did, all of a sudden, the power grew exponentially. Oh, oh I look forward to hearing that. It's exciting. Um, Sensa Mamma is indeed probably the, the centerpiece of the opera, would you say? Absolutely. Um, my favorite. Yours? Absolutely. Without a doubt. It was originally a different aria that they, that they removed and put Sensa Mamma in instead. Mm -hmm. And it, it just tells her story that much better. Mm -hmm. um, what I love about Puccini is that when you hear the music, you could, if you didn't understand a single word of what's being spoken, you still can understand what our soir is going through. Mm -hmm. The music tells that story. Mm -hmm. And Sensa Mama is a perfect example of that. You just let it happen to you, and all of her emotions you will feel inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the opera will be performed in Italian, correct? The opera's in Italian, but there'll be a synopsis for each room. Um, so we'll provide a QR code so that while you're in each space, you can look at the synopsis and get a sense of what's going on, mm -hmm. and then just let the music do the rest. All right. So yesterday, I sat in in uh, the rehearsal of mm -hmm. the scene in the, between the Principessa and Suor Angelica, and somebody offered me the libretto, mm -hmm. but I said, no, I do not want the libretto. I want the music to really. And as you noted at the end of the scene, I was completely moved by this scene. I think we all were. Um, you know, it's something very special to be in the rehearsal when something is being crafted. Mm -hmm. You get to see the raw energy come to life. But it was a really good indication of what the audience will feel as well. Mm -hmm. You'll sit there, you'll be in a new space, you'll be experiencing something completely different than what we're used to in a theater, and yet that's when the impact happens mm -hmm. and the emotion sort of overwhelms. Yeah. It's one of my favorite moments in the show. Now, because it's immersive and people move around, we can't have a thousand people, so we're limiting numbers? 200 per night, um, and that's really based on sort of the size of the space. We want people to feel the intimacy, um, but we also want people to be comfortable. So mm -hmm. although the nave can fit, I think, 1,200 people in it, we're going to not go that, that <laughs> large for this performance. We'll, we'll stay with our 200, but I think for those 200 lucky people, they're going to really have a unique opportunity that no one else has ever experienced before in the entire world. Yeah. And who do you have as your targeted audience? Oh, 
anyone who wants to be entertained and moved. Mm. Um, you know, I think Out of the Box really speaks to two different audience. We love the opera aficionados who know and love opera because we can reframe and recontextualize it in an interesting way that they may not have experienced before. But we also love first-time opera goers. And we find that seeing a piece with Out of the Box opera, you have this opportunity not to just have a great entertaining moment, but you get to see a piece fully realized in a completely unique way. And as an audience member, to be moved like that, it's something that's unforgettable. Mm -hmm. And so we really encourage first-time opera goers to like take a chance, spend an hour with us. We promise you will be absolutely, it'll be absolutely worth it. Mm -hmm. You will be fully entertained mm -hmm. and you'll have a, an experience that is unforgettable. And it is about an hour. Which about is an unusual for an opera. It's a nice, a tidy hour, a few minutes to get from scene to scene, but often Swar Angelica is part of the Tritico, and it's sort of sandwiched between two other operas. But I'm excited that we're going to give Swar Angelica its own space and give it its due. There's nothing sandwiched about this piece. <laughs> it will be fully realized and come to life. And what do you hope people will take away with them once they leave the Basilica? Well, always we want people to be entertained and have an unforgettable artistic experience. But I'm also hoping that they see Soir not just as like a fairy tale person, like a once upon a time sort of person, but that she is someone who is relatable to today. Mm -hmm. People go through trauma all the time. We don't always like to talk about it, but in this is an opportunity to see somebody go through something traumatic and actually come out the other side redeemed. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a really beautiful message that you, sometimes life is hard and sometimes life deals us blows that we're not able to fully comprehend or fully grapple with, mm -hmm. but that it's going to be okay and ultimately with time we can move on. Mm -hmm. Opening night is June 26, but that's sold out. But we have performances on Thursday, Friday at 7 p.m. and on Saturday at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. You can go to Out of the Box Theatre website to purchase your tickets. We hope to see you there. Thank you so much.